welcome to another Michael's Classroom. Uh, just so you know, this meeting is being recorded, so you'll be able to go back and watch it without any problems. And we do have an introduction from our lovely friend Lillian from Your Inspirations. So I'm going to let Lillian jump in and say hello to all of you. Thanks, Molly. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. Today, we have Molly from the Molly Bird ready with us for another exciting class. Today, we'll be knitting the Lacy Knit Cup Cozy. My name is Lillian from Yarn Inspirations, and I'll be helping with any questions that you might have during today's class. Feel free to ask questions in the chat here, and we'll be sure that Molly answers them. While we're giving you some time to join the class, feel free to let us know where you're watching from. And just a reminder, as Molly said, today's class is being recorded, and you can find the recording at michaels.com slash classes. Perfect. There we go. So, hey, y'all, if you have not been in a Zoom chat before or a Zoom call like this uh, at the bottom of your screen you'll see where it says chat at least the bottom of my screen that's where it says chat if you click that it opens up and you'll see a chat bar that opens up on the side if you have questions as i'm instructing today make sure you post your questions in the chat lillian is going to be supervising that for me answering questions if she can and if she needs to interrupt me and say hey marley we have a question she can do that also uh, so that's the best place for you to go so um Hopefully you guys are all hearing sound now. There was a couple people that said there were no sounds. Hopefully you're good now and everything is okay. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Hopefully you can hear me. I see you, okay. I guess they can hear me. So that's, that's good. <laughs> um, I know that the pattern is gonna be pasted over in the chat. So if you wanna follow along with the pattern today, although I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna loosely follow the pattern a little bit. I'm actually gonna talk you through how the pattern is written. But then I'm going to say, hey, if you want this even easier, let me show you. Let's put a Marley Bird twist on it and make it super easy um, because that's how I roll. Okay, y'all. Um, plus, we're like, what? <clears throat> we'll see less than 10 days until Christmas. We're in the middle of Hanukkah. Uh, you might need a gift like now. So <laughs> let's just get this done, right? Um, okay, so the pattern has been linked in the chat. So you guys should be able to get that. Thank you, Maddie, with Michael. She has put a... Uh, a link to a Google Drive. So you should be able to, to grab that without any problems. My nose is running a little bit today. So I apologize. I had to keep grabbing my, my Kleenex. Um, as Lillian said, we're going to be making a cup cozy and it's a little lace cup cozy. Um, don't let that word scare you. It's very easy. Chances are, as you guys were beginners, you accidentally created lace when you did accidental yarn overs. This time, we're just going to do them on purpose with a decrease to couple it. Um, the pattern itself, when you read through the pattern, it does not indicate that you're supposed to use double pointed needles. Like it just says, hey, with size five needles. But then the instructions indicate you're supposed to work in the round. Well, if you're going to work in the round in this really small circumference, you either have to use double pointed needles or you have to do what's called magic loop or you have to use very small circumference circular needles. Um, the other option we have is to knit it flat and then just whip it together. And the fact that this is just a cup cozy, that would actually be my preference. That would be the Marley bird twist on it. I'd be like, dude, just knit this flat. Don't, don't give yourself a headache with the double points. If you're not already familiar with them, just knit it flat, whip it up and you have something really easy. So what I will do today though, I will start off showing you how to cast on two double points and get started working some ribbing. So that way you can see how that works. But then what I plan on doing, like I've already worked up some ribbing flat here, and I was just gonna show you how to read the instructions if you were to change it from rounds to rows. And it's literally as easy as changing rows six and eight to pearls instead of knits, but that's it. Like, so it's very, very super easy to do. Um, the biggest thing we're going to jump in with is just make sure you guys believe in yourself, you can do this. Double points might give you a little bit of a headache at start, but at least you know there's light at the end of the tunnel. If you don't like them at all, you can always just knit it up straight. All right, everybody good? Everybody have your yarn and your patterns and your needles. Sweet. Okay, let's go to the hands. Go to the hands. I am just using some worsted weight yarn. The pattern calls for super saver, but really guys, we all know right now, like getting yarn is, is tricky. The shelves, some of them are packed, some of them are, are not so packed so it's kind of a crapshoot whether you even get to go to the store or not but if you have worsted weight yarn around the house you can always pick it up or don't forget you can always order directly from michael's and pick it up um, at curbside all right so 
I have double pointed needles here. Are you guys familiar with double pointed needles? Have you seen them before? Um, essentially what it is, we have taken one needle, if you were to think this as one needle, and we broke it apart so that we could get five needles. And with these five needles, when we arrange them, we'll, we'll arrange four of them. And it's essentially like we make, let's do it like this. We're gonna make break points in our knitting so that we can work in the round, okay? You see what I mean here? The tricky thing here though is maintaining control of these needles if you're not familiar with them. Now, I will give you full disclosure. I love double pointed needles. The cooler you look when you're knitting, the better. And there's nothing cooler than knitting with double pointed needles. I guarantee you, you do this out on the street, people will be like, holy crap, she's a magician, okay? And it's all about looking cool. So if you can wrangle these together, they're gonna be your friend. We're gonna start off, I always use a, a, a long tail cast on when I use double pointed needles because I do what I like to call the no cuss cast on. It's a way that I don't drop stitches when I cast on. So I have a nice long tail here because the instructions tell me I wanna have 42 stitches. So I have a nice long tail. I'm gonna do a slip knot. Of course, it's like, it's like I got a knot. All right, I know you guys can feel me on this. I'm gonna pull out some guts here. Of course, right? It's, that's the way it happens. All right, so we're gonna do a slip knot and I'm gonna place that slip knot directly onto my needle. Is there enough white space you guys can see? And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start off by placing stitches onto this needle. So I'm, I'm terrible at math. What is 42 divided by four? So 10 and a half. So we're gonna do 10, let's do, um, so if we do 10, 10, 12 and 12, would that work? No, that's not right. 10, 10, 11, 11. All right, so 10, 10, 11, 11. So I'm gonna do 10 stitches on here. So one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And I did a long tail cast on, which gives me this nice ridge. Can you guys see that nice ridge right there? I use that ridge. So that way, when I grab my next needle, I essentially rest that needle along that ridge and I just push it up just a little bit taller. So it just looks like it's an extension of this needle. I make sure it's on top of the yarn. See how it's not over the yarn like that? It's on top of it, so to speak. I position my hands again for the long tail cast on and I continue on, only this time I'm gonna cast on to this new needle. So I'm gonna put 11 onto this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Whoa, that did not work out very good. So what was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay. Again, I have this nice ridge. So I'm going to grab another needle and put it up next to it. Now I do like to use five total needles because the more break points you actually have in your work, the less likely you are to get like a run in your work, you know, like um, ladders. So I prefer more needles than fewer. So I am going to use four needles here. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna put 10 onto this one. You see how once again, I'm, I'm casting on to the new needle, but it's resting up really close to that one. All right. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. You can push these up a little bit as you go along so that they don't fall off if you're uncomfortable. We have one more. We're gonna do 11 on this last one. I think I saw a question come in where somebody asked, how do you determine the length of your tail? Well, you can guesstimate, obviously, or if you wanna take your yarn and wrap it around your needle for the same number, as, same number of times as you um, are going to cast on, 
So if we have 42 stitches, if I wrapped my needle 42 times and then gave myself a little extra room, at that point, that's where I would put my, my slip knot. And so all of that yarn that would be wrapped around my needle would be my tail, okay? That's one way you could do it. All right, so I have 11 for this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11, okay? Y'all with me so far? So if this were on one long needle, cause somebody's gonna ask, why can't I cast all these on onto one needle and then separate them out? You absolutely can. I don't do that because when I do that, I drop stitches and then I curse, which is why I call this the no curse cast on because I don't drop any stitches. See how this works? So if these were on one long needle, it, it would look just like this. We just essentially took all of our stitches and we just already divvied them out between the needles, okay? Now I'm gonna set this on the table. And if you ever need help with this guys, I have a video on my YouTube channel for long for the no cuss cast on. So you can watch this all again, even like slower. Our goal here now is we wanna take this first stitch we put on here. So this was our slip knot and we wanted to meet up with our last stitch. So that way we can begin to start working in the round. So to do that, I usually will set my work down just like this. So this was the last needle I used. This was the first needle I used. I'm gonna hold the last needle and I'm gonna rotate these three needles up. Notice I have this needle here going on top of this one. Okay, you guys see how that works? So now I'm gonna hold this one. So this was the, the one I did right before this one. And I'm gonna rotate these two. I'm essentially making a square with all of my needles here. All right, you see how I, where I am so far? Now I'm gonna hold this one and I'm gonna rotate this one. What do we finally have here? We have our slip knot that I told you needed to meet up with our last stitch we cast on. I've now met them together. The other benefit of doing it this way is that I can quickly see if my stitches are twisted at all at my join points. And I can make sure that all of my stitches are laying correctly on my needles because by using that long tail cast on, I can see these pearl bumps essentially on the inside of my needles there. So I know that's the inside of my work. Y'all with me? Okay. Now, when you work in the round, something I want you to think about is you want your, your work essentially like this. I don't ever want to work where it's like this where I'm, I'm essentially, this would be like if I'm working inside out, right? Because if I were working along this way, see all of a sudden I'm working on top of pearls, all right? But if I have the work, I know all these strings are probably confusing. If I have the work situated like this and I'm working this direction, I'm, I'm gonna be working on top of these knits, right? So I I'm, I'm always wanna have the, the right side of my work facing me. I want the right side of my fabric, the stitches I'm creating. I want those out here. I don't want those in here. Otherwise you're knitting inside out. So as you take this skill and you move on to do something like socks, if you don't make sure of this, you're going to knit your socks inside out. When you get to the heel, it's going to be a real big bummer. Okay. So it's important that when you're working this, we are going to go from this needle to this needle. So this yarn here, not the tail, but this yarn here, is going to be used to knit this first stitch over here. All right, just like if we were working in the round because that's what we're going to do. So essentially what we're doing, and I will let you know this first round is always the hardest. And so typically I tell people just to knit the whole first round, don't immediately jump into your knit one pearl one ribbing. It's a personal preference that I do. I feel like it stabilizes all of the stitches on the needles. It gives you a chance to grip them appropriately. And I like the way it looks. If you don't like it and you wanna jump right into your knit one pearl one ribbing, you absolutely can do that. But this is one of those things that it just makes it easier on your life, okay? We want to 
only work with two needles at a time when we're working with double points. We're gonna work with this needle and this needle. But the tricky thing here is that the yarn we're using when we go from one needle to the next in our work is coming from the previous needle, okay? So if I were to take this needle and stick it into that stitch I wanna knit into, just like if I were starting it at the beginning of a round, I'm gonna take this yarn, wrap it around the needle I just stuck in, come out, so I just knit, right? And then have it jump off. But here is the tricky part. This new stitch I just created there, I wanna make sure that new stitch is really tight, okay? I want it to be super tight to the stitch that it is essentially attached to over on this needle. The reason I want that is because it will keep my, my stitches between my needles really, really, really snug, okay? Once you tighten up that first one, you have to tighten up the next one too. So this is where we would normally be going into a purl one, right? Because that's what the instructions tell us to do. But this is Marley telling you, let's just knit this first round just to get everything in place, okay? This little, this little coffee cozy is quick enough that once you get done with this first one, you can make another one and do it the way the instructions are if you want. You do the second one, give it a nice pull. The reason you have to pull the second one nice and tight, you guys, is it keeps the first one in check. That's like, that's its wingman, okay? The second stitch is the wingman to the first one. It's making sure it stays nice and snug to this stitch over here, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna continue knitting. And notice, I just let the other needles just hang out. They're just hanging out there. I'm looking at the outside of my work. See how I'm looking at my knits? I'm not looking at the pearl bumps on the inside. I'm looking at my knits. I'm just going to knit. I'm going to knit this whole first round. Everybody with me here? Lillian, how's everybody doing? Yep, I think we're all doing okay. Okay. You guys are getting like a crash course in double point needles. I do entire classes on this. All right, so I get to the end of my needle and I'm like, okay, I have this spare needle. Just like if we were at the end of a row, we would turn our work and go back, but we don't have to turn our work in the sense of turning to go to the opposite side. We have to rotate. So I essentially rotate so that I can get to these stitches over here. Okay, so if this were 12 o'clock, I'm rotating so this needle goes to three o'clock. You see that? I push this needle down and we're back to essentially where we were at the start. We have our yarn over here on this needle. We're gonna be knitting on off this first stitch on this needle using this empty needle that we just created. So I'm gonna go into this stitch, yarn over, and that yarn over comes from that stitch there on that needle, you guys all see? I shouldn't say yarn over, my yarn comes from that stitch over to this one. I come out and when I pop it off, I really wanna make sure that's snug, right? So it's nice and tight. But remember, we also have to make that next stitch nice and tight. Why? Because it's its wingman. We want that wingman nice and close. We don't leave any man behind, okay? And now I just carry on knitting down this row, just like normal. I don't have to worry about being too tight anymore. Everything's gonna be just fine. And once you get going, all of those quote unquote tight stitches we've done, they start to average out and even out along the row. And so you won't even be able to tell that they were tight. They'll look like they were just continuous stitches. And I know that at the beginning when you're first doing double points like this, you might be like, oh my gosh, they feel like they're in the way, they're all over the place. I promise you at some point you just kind of ignore them. Like I don't even really like see them anymore. Okay. So I'm at the end, I rotate, I bring my needle down and I essentially position myself. Now I know somebody might ask, how do you hold? Like I hold my needle just like this. Like I ignore all the outside needles and I hold my needle just like this. And I'm primarily a continental knitter. So this is actually a little tricky for me to knit 
English, but I can do it. And hit that first one, make sure it's nice and snug. And hit the second one and make sure it's nice and snug. And now I continue on. I will know when I'm at the end of the round because my tail will be on that last stitch that I knit. And if that last stitch that I knit is a little bit loose because that was the join, I'm not gonna be super, super worried about it because when I go to weave in my tail, I can just cinch up anything that seems to be a little bit loose and it'll be just fine. Okay. All right, so I have one more needle to go. All right, everybody take a drink. That's a party foul. <laughs> Drop the needle. All right, so I have one more needle. Give it a nice snug. Do the same on the next one. You guys cannot tell me if you're at the park whenever we can all go out to the park again. <laughs> if you're knitting with double points, people aren't gonna stop and be like, look at her, she is amazing. So like I said, I always like to knit my first round because it I feel like it really stabilizes all the stitches. It gives me a chance to get those joins started without having to fiddle with some pearls to tighten up stitches at the start because, I mean, pearls just are tricky to me. All right, so like I said, right here at the start, I'm back to where my tail is. I can rotate. I can see it's a little bit loose. I'm not gonna stress about it, okay? Because I can pull, I can pull my tail, it tightens it up. Once I weave in this tail, that's gonna be nice and close together. I'm not gonna worry about that at all. Now it's at this point, I would transition and I would go into my knit one, purl one ribbing. So just like before, now I've switched where I hold my yarn, obviously you guys can see. So I knit my first one, give it a nice pull. I transition to my purl. Now here's the trick when you're gonna do knit one, purl one ribbing and this purl needs to be tight. Once you take the purl off, bring your yarn back to the back and give it a pull, okay? When you bring it back to the back and give your yarn a pull with the purl, that's what really tightens it up. See guys, like I can go like this, the, the needle's not gonna fall out. That's how tight these are, okay? Does that scare you? Woo! I see you, LJ. She's like, no, don't do that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just continue on, knit one, purl one. So this is, this is what you guys would do, all right? So this is the, this is essentially the tricky part to this coffee cozy, right? Is working with double points and getting started here. The next part that would be tricky is essentially your lace, which is not hard at all. It's just a combination of yarn overs and decreases. See, I ended with a pearl, so I'm gonna start with a knit. It's a combination of pearls, or not pearls, I'm sorry, <laughs> of yarn overs and decreases to create some really nice open texture. The only difference between working in the round for the lace section or working flat is on the rows where you aren't working any lace, where you're just doing plain knits. Well, if you're in the round, you're always looking at the right side of your fabric, right? That's the beauty of working in the round is like if you wanted to do stock and net, you're always doing um, knits, you don't ever have to do a purl because you're always looking at the right side of your fabric. Well, if we were going to work our lace section flat, we would have to turn our work. So instead of working the knits like we would if we were in the round, we would be working purls. So what I feel like here is I've shown you how to, how to get started with these double points, right? How to, how to get them started and then once you get some ribbing happening here, let's see where am I, I start the pearl. Once you get some ribbing happening here, that's when you're gonna jump into the lace portion. And I feel like I'm gonna show you the lace portion on the flat piece. So that way you can see if you're like, you know what, these double points are not for me. How am I gonna do it on the flat piece? And even if the double points are for you, you can watch me work on the flat piece knowing 
that instead of pearls, you would just knit. Does that make sense? Am I making sense there? I think so. I see a lot of nodding going on, which makes me happy. I'm at the end of my round, my first round. One thing that's beautiful when you're at the end of the first round and you've created your, your knits and pearls, you no longer really have to think about it. You can look at what the stitch is. And if you're looking at that nice B there, you know you're looking at a knit stitch, so you would knit it. And then you're looking at a pearl, so I would pearl it. And again, every time you just make sure they're just real nice and stuck. Okay. Okay, it's good so far. Does this is this good? Am I a good point to transition over to where the, the lace would be? And I'm gonna move to this needle. Give me a thumbs up. Somebody talk to me, tell me what's up. Okay. All right, I think that's good. Lillian, is that what you're seeing on your end too? I just want to make sure I'm not going faster than what people want. Yep, no, I think you're doing good. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to put this down then and I'm going to transition to the straights. Hold on, I got to finish. I got to finish my row. You guys know that, right? Okay. So that's essentially what it starts to look like. All right, so I'm going to bring this in. So what I've done here, just so you guys know, I tried not to change too much in the pattern. So that way, if you guys wanted to do it this way, it wasn't like, oh, what did she say? So I cast on 42 and I use the long tail cast on and I like this side of my long tail cast on for the right side. So that means that once I cast on and I turned my work, I was looking at um, those pearl bumps right down there. So I treated that like that was my wrong side. So what I did was I started off with um, um, a pearl one. So I did pearl one, knit one, pearl one, knit one, pearl one, knit one, and I ended with a knit and then I started with a pearl. Doesn't really matter. You could start off with a knit one, pearl one, just get yourself some ribbing. And your ribbing doesn't have to end on round or row four on your, your cuff portion. End it wherever you want. You can make this double the size. It doesn't really matter. You do what works for you, okay? This is yours. I liked... This I ended, let's see, let's see, that was my cast on. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm on, I would, I would be on what would be my row six. Okay. I'm going to jump into, this would be round five of the pattern, but we're going to call it row five. The beauty here is that we're going to do exactly what's written, just not in the round. Okay. So I'm going to jump in. I'm going to knit one. I'm gonna knit two together. So these two stitches, I'm going to knit them together. I yarn over. Did you guys see how that goes? So you bring your yarn between the needles to the front, bring it up over top of your right hand needle back to the back and leave it there. That little strand right there, that's your yarn over. Leave that there. And now I'm gonna knit one. I yarn over again, bring my yarn between my needles bring it back over top of my right hand needle and leave it to the back. Now it says I'm supposed to do an SKP. If you want to do an SSK, you could do that too. But essentially it says to slip a stitch, knit one stitch, and then you pass that slip stitch over. Okay. That's an SKP. And then I knit one. Then it has the, the semicolon, it says repeat from star around. So I go back to star, which is knit one. So I'll go knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip one, knit one, pass the slip stitch over knit one. I'm going to do it with the yarn in my opposite hand because I know some of you will like to see that. Do you like to see me struggle? No. <laughs> All right. So I start off with a knit one. Then I knit two together. Yarn over. So between my needles to the front, back over top my right hand needle to the back. Knit one, yarn over again, slip one, 
knit one, pass the slip stitch over, and then knit one. Okay, doesn't look like much yet, it's all right. We're gonna do this all the way down the row. Knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, Yarn over, slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over, knit one. And we do it again. <laughs> knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip one, Knit one, pass the slip stitch over, knit one. I should have enough for one more, so let's hope I do. <laughs> so knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over, knit one. Okay. You guys see that? Now, round five is supposed to be knit. But if we're working it flat, you guys all know what is the opposite? If you're looking at a knit stitch, what's on the opposite side? And the crowd says pearl. Yes, right. So when I turn my work, if I would, if I was looking at my right side, and I was supposed to knit, if I turn my work, and I'm on the wrong side, I'm looking at pearls. So I would purl all of these. All right. So the only difference if you're working this flat really is on round six and round eight, instead of knitting, you're going to purl all of these. Now, please forgive me. I am terrible at purling English style. So I'm going to purl continental. So that way we can actually get through this before the end of class. All right. So I'm just purling my stitches back. Now, if you've never done a yarn over before, that's what it looks like. It looks like a piece of string on your needle. That's all it is. And you literally are just going to purl it. That's what gives you that nice, pretty lace hole. And then you knit, there's another one and you purl it. I didn't mean knit, I meant purl. Um, so some of you might be thinking, oh my gosh, this explains why I get all these holes in my knitting. If you've never done this before. Yes, this is what happens. It's gonna purl down. Pretty easy. I mean, the beauty thing about doing lace is that you don't usually have, I like to call the lace rows, the action rows. So you don't have like two action rows, one on top of the other. It's usually you have your action row and the next row is sort of like this relief row of, okay, you get to knit or just purl. Okay. So this is like my relief row. I'm just purling all my stitches. And when I get to the end of my row, I will turn my work, which I will be back on my right side. And I will be on what would be called round seven. So we're gonna do round seven, but we're doing it in a row, but it's the same thing. So we start off with the knit two together. Yarn over, knit three. Yarn over, slip, knit one, pass slip stitch over, and repeat. Can I jump in with a question, Molly? Yeah. When you're slipping, is that slipping as if to knit? Yes, I am. Okay. Is that okay? I mean, yeah. I was, I was, I was like, is that hard? Did, okay. I, did I miss something? I was no, we just had a question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was always taught that if you are told to slip, you should always slip as if after as okay. If you're not, okay, you're supposed to slip as if to purl if you're not told, but when you're working a decrease like this, you're supposed to slip as if to knit. Just like an SSK, you slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, and then knit those together. So I always slip as if to knit. Wait, can you say all that one more time for the all crowd? Right. So if it was like, oh, I was just supposed to slip, normally you would slip as if to purl because it doesn't change the orientation, okay? But when you're working a decrease like this, I slip as if to knit, and then I would knit one and then pass that over 
it, it looks better. Like I was, that's the way you're supposed to do that stitch. Does, does that so it's make like sense? a neater finish. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. That's it's great. a neater finish. Yeah. Now I've totally lost where I was. If you lose where you are, just read your knitting. Let's see, that was my, sl- so I did a knit two together. All right. So I'm at a yarn over. So yarn over, knit three. So one, and this one is now backwards. So I got to fix it. And then two and then three yarn over. All right. So I slip as if to knit and then I knit one. And then when I pass it over, see how it rests on there nicely and it leans to the left. If I did it Very opposite, pretty. let me show you what it looks like if you did it the opposite, just so that we could see. So let's see, this was a yarn over. If I did it opposite, if I slipped as if to purl and knit one and then slipped it, it gives you this twist at the bottom. Mm-hmm. See that twist? Which is not that big of a deal if you, if you don't mind it and you're consistent with it. It's just, it's not supposed to have that twist. This is a very good pro tip. Thank you so much. Okay. I'm like, he scared me for a second. I was like, did I do something wrong though? No. I'm like, no, no, this is how it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. All right, so yarn over, slip as if to knit, knit one, pass the slip stitch over. See how there's no twist? See how the, the legs are apart? They aren't crossed over? Okay, so knit two together. Yarn over, knit three. Yarn over, slip as if to knit. Knit one, pass slip stitch over. Knit two together. Yarn over, knit three. Yarn over, slip, knit, pass. Da, 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 da. The good news is, I mean, you guys will be able to memorize this pretty quickly because you only do it a couple rows. Like it's really not that big of a deal slip knit or rounds if you're going to do it in rounds whatever your drug of choice is let's see here just joking I didn't mean like don't do drugs I just you know it's just a phrase all right knit three yarn over and boom you guys see that so then this would be round eight it says to knit but we're going to turn our work so we're going to purl back this is our relief row. We're just going to purl. If you're working in the round, you just get to knit them all pretty easy. Can I ask another question while you're having a relief row? I suppose this is your limit. <laughs> so it better be a good one. <laughs> it's a question from Carla. Uh, they say, one of the things I struggle with is when I have knit two together and I only have one stitch left on my DPNs, it looks like I might, I might have this problem on the pattern. Any suggestions? She only has, okay, so that's where you have to maneuver the stitches on your DPN. So that way you always have the two stitches um, in place. And it might be the nature of the pattern that you might have to move a stitch over every now and again. Like on one round, it might be that you you don't need it on another needle and then, and then another round you do. Let me pick up the DPNs here in a minute and I'll show you what I mean. It's like when you get down to where you have the two, supposed to be a knit two together, you're gonna have to just use either move the stitch that's on the needle you're on over to the next needle or move the next stitch from the next needle over to the needle you're on. Did that, I mean, clear as mud, right? That's what that is right there. Okay, I'm gonna show you. You guys see how the lace is starting to work up there? Okay, so here. It says you're gonna repeat rounds nine or for nine and 10, you repeat rounds five and seven. So you would do another lace round, a purl round, a lace round, a purl round. And then you go back to your knit one, purl one ribbing. Okay, so let's go back over here. We have plenty of time. I'm gonna come over here. Let me get a round of ribbing going here and I will show some lace on here. You go ahead and ask questions away if people are are wondering on stuff. if I am missing anything for them. I just want to get some ribbing on here so I can get into the lace. So even though like, for example, even though I divvied up my stitches on here, 10, 11, 10, 11, I don't have to keep it like that the whole time. I could switch them up. I could have eight on one. I could have 12 on another. I could do anything I want. So you can, you can move these around 
as much as you want when you're working on something like this. If you're working on something that's more like a sock or something that has to do with shaping like a glove, that's where you have to be a little bit more uh, consistent with whatever the designer wants you to have on your needles because the pattern could be written in such a way that it says work down to the end of this needle and do a decrease. But when you're just doing something like this, you can have the stitches divvied up between your needles however you wish. Get over here. I hate starting with a purl stitch on the, a DPN. I really try not to do that, but oh well. Am I the only one? Anybody else? Hate starting with the purl? Yeah, I see you. I see you, Stephanie. <laughs> I see you there. She's like, yes, I feel you. It's the struggle is real, y'all. All right, so coming over here. All right, so I'm gonna pretend like I'm on a round five. Let's see here. I guess it would probably be round seven where she's probably struggling with the knit two together. I don't know, we'll see. So let's do a knit one and then knit two together. So this would be a round five. Yarn over, knit one. Yarn over, slip, knit, pass slip stitch over, and then knit one. Okay, so this would be knit one, knit two together. Now my two together are on one needle, so I'm good there. What I don't like is that I have to begin with the yarn over here because I'm gonna lose it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my yarn over on this needle and then I'm going to do an SK, SKP. So I'm going to slip, knit, pass slip stitch over. Can you see what I did there? So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven onto that needle. And then now I have to knit one trying to find myself in the pattern. And then I do a knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, SKP, so then I knit one, and then this is another knit one, so I finish with my knit one there, rotate, Now I'm at a knit two together. Yarn over, knit one, yarn over, S, K, P, knit one. Now I'm at knit one, knit two together. Yarn over, knit one, but now I'm at another yarn over. See, like I'm gonna have a yarn over between here and I don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do here, here, I'm gonna undo that one. Nope, I can't do that. Here, yarn, and do the same thing. Yarn over, and I'm gonna work my SKP and just move it to that needle. So now that needle has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now I knit one. And then knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over. Why am I coming up? Did I miss a stitch somewhere? Did you guys see me miss a stitch? Because I'm coming up with an extra stitch here. Did I miss a stitch? You guys are very quiet out there. You know what you're thinking? Ha, 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 she missed a stitch. Okay, so we have right here was a knit one and then a knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, SKP, knit one. Knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one. Oh, it's right there. It was right there. 
So I can take all these out. And start over or just pull out that row. This is a good example of why you should have a lifeline. If you don't know what a lifeline is, it's where you have a string resting into your work, holding place where things are correct. What are y'all thinking right now? You're like holding your breath. Is she gonna get all the stitches? Probably not. And that's okay. I'm so close to the beginning. If this were actually like something I was working on, I'd probably just start over. Lillian, what are they saying? It's very quiet, but we have a couple of questions. <laughs> Everybody is holding their breath. It's kind of nice to have it not be happening to me. Do you know? <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure that's what everybody's feeling. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Maria says, this is stressing me out. <laughs> this is stressing you out? Nah, it's just sticks and string. I mean. That's right. I'm not even like trying to make sure that they're like the right direction because I can do that once they're on the needle. Yeah, the thing is like, they never go far. It's always grabbable. Yeah, just grab mm -hmm. them and you can just take care of it. I'm just trying to get them all on here right now. Let's see here. Might do one round of, of knit and purl just to make sure that that one fell out so I can fix that though and grab it before it goes too far. I think that one fell out too. Right there. Grab that one at least and fix it when I come to it. You guys get to see me fix stitches. How about that, huh? More than what you paid for. <laughs> I think everybody's just nice. To, you know, it's nice to see we're not the only ones that rip back right? and start over. That even but, the pros do it. Yeah, I misread stuff and I'm like, oh darn it. It's it's in my defense. It's a little tricky to talk and read and knit and teach all at the same time. <laughs> Did I get one? I have one more. Right there. I think I got them all. We'll see here. All right, let's see. I'll count as we come to them. Um, that one there looks like it needs to go. Do I have five needles in here? I do. So I'm going to move that one over one. And let's see. All right, so this was a pearl. And that is a knit. All right, so that would be the end of that needle. Okay. So now I want to just divvy these up a little bit so I can get a spare needle here. So quiet, y'all are so quiet. <laughs> We're concentrating with you. I know. Mm -hmm. Okay. On here. Oh, my yarn is all totally split there. That's okay. Okay. So we have a pearl right here. Starting off with the pearl. Hey, we're winning already, everybody. Okay. So let me get these stitches going. If they, if I come to them and they're backwards, I can either just flip them around so they're the right direction, or just knit them through the back leg or purl them through the back leg so that they're right. I'm just gonna have all these stitches on my needle. It'll be all right. Everybody breathe yet? <laughs> I should be counting, but I'm not. I think my drop stitches were on the next needle. So I'm gonna go like this. And the pearl. No, they're not divided up very evenly. That's okay. 
you guys saw the where I was like, you don't want to have, you don't want to start off with that yarn over between your needles because that's not very fun because we will totally lose a stitch. We don't want that. Oh, you know what else I could show you? You could do magic loop if you guys want to. You could try that out. Okay, everything's back on there. Ta-da! All right. You guys want to try this again? <laughs> Let me wipe my nose. Okay, I'm going to try this again. So this would be, actually, am I at the start of the round yet? Nope, I'm not at the start of the round. So I got to go back to the start of the round. Golly gee. Let's do a couple more on this one. And then I'll do one more. I hear you guys laughing at me out there. We do have a couple of questions here about working on circular needles. Mm -hmm. so I think that'll be great to see. So on like a like a magic loop. Mm -hmm. Okay. And with a we have a question a little earlier. Let me just pull it up. And I Eva to... asked, "Is it possible to use circular needles join and then knit in the round?" Yes, but you have to have a very small circumference circular needle. Okay. And so... then Claud Claudia asks. Um, I'd like to know about circular needles as well. I was trying with a 16 inch cord, but yeah, that that's won't not work. Gonna work. Yeah, nope. you definitely need even smaller than that. Okay. Um, I'm losing my train of thought. So I, I only know the really small ones. Like I know Addy has them and Chaigu has them. Um, but I don't know if you can get them at a, at a large store. Um, so I don't know if you can. But if you do magic loop, you could try that also. So I'm gonna try this guys real quick. Knit one, knit two together. Oops, knit two together. Yarn over, knit one. Yarn over, SKP. All right, so I'm gonna pause there. I'm gonna, cause my, you guys see all my yarn is Divvy funny, but it'd be the same thing. Like, say you finish that, you're like, okay, I have stitches here, but I know I need to divvy those up in a different way. So that way I can make sure all my stitches are on the same needle when I need to get to them. You just slide them over and like redistribute them. Does that, does that make sense? Like, that's what I was trying to show you all along, like at the very beginning. So let's see, I ended with an SKP. So I would start with my knit one and then I'm at the beginning of the round again. So I would knit one knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, SKP. And then knit one. So if I knit this one, the next one's gonna be a knit two together, it's over there. So let's keep it that way. So I'll knit one and then knit two together, so on and so forth. Okay, so yarn over, knit one, yarn over, SKP, and then knit one. Okay, now magic loop. Say you wanted to do magic loop, you could cast on, and essentially what you would do is take a long circular like this, and we have our stitches here. You essentially would pick a point. and you pull your cord through so that it's a, what you've done essentially, it's usually like a midway point. Obviously that's not midway, I'd have to pick a different point. But you pick a midway point that now your work is divided in half and you work one half at a time. So I pull this, this out, you see how it's now like this sort of like a figure eight and I continue on working in the round like I'm, I'm working, I have to be at the end of that row there to come back around. But you, you're working, nope, that's not true. I'm, I'm speaking incorrectly. I have to be on the opposite row. I have to get through this round to show you properly how to do this. I have to be at the, um, 
I have to be at the end of a right side round. Okay, so let me get through this, this row to show you. Because if I show you the opposite, it's not gonna make sense. So let me get through. This is a row five or round five. So knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip, knit, pass, knit one. Knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, pass, knit one. Knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip, knit, pass, knit one, knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip, knit, pass, knit one, knit one, knit two together, Yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip, knit, pass, knit one. Okay, just like before, we want this stitch over here to come up and meet that one. So essentially, I'm going to pick a midway point here. Essentially, fold my piece in half. So I have both sides of my cuff on my needles. You see that? Okay. So the side I want to work on is closest to me. The yarn is coming from the needle back there. So I take the needle in back, the one that's away from me. I pull it out. Okay. Here's my figure eight that I was showing you at the beginning. And I'm going to start knitting into this stitch with what my stitch would be, which would be around six. And because I'm looking at the right side and I'm working in the round again, I would just be knitting. So I would go into this stitch with the yarn coming from back here. And here's the tricky thing. You don't wanna pull it so tight because if you do, you are making this stitch back here, the same size as your cord and you will never be able to get it back on your needles. So that's the tricky part with magic loop. So you have to be very careful with that, but it's the same idea. So now I just, it's just like working in the round before, only now I'm just knitting these stitches. Okay, does this make sense? It makes silent. sense to me. Everyone else is quiet, so I think we're okay. okay. We do All have right. one question here. Yeah. Um, asking if you have some videos on your YouTube channel about Mag Magic Loop. Um. Yes. So I well, I don't have like a specific video just for Magic Loop, but I did show how to do Magic Loop making socks. So mm -hmm. uh, if you want to check out the toe up sock videos, I talk about Magic Loop there. Um, I plan on doing some standalone magic loop videos to mm -hmm. show people how to do it just like this, but I just haven't had a chance to do it yet. I've been making them into project videos, Perfect. but if you watch the toe up sock video, I do talk about magic loop and also two circular needles. And for everyone listening, if you visit Molly's YouTube channel and you just search magic loop, that video will come up first as well. Yeah. So it's really easy to find. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. So when I got to the end, you saw I just rotated my work. I bring my needle back up into play. You see that? So my, my needle with the yarn is in back. Pull the needle out and I start again, just over here. And again, I'm still just knitting because I'm still on the round six. See a lot of people really concentrating. If you were making this flat, guys, when you were done, if you wanted to do like a mattress stitch to seam it up, you could. But honestly, it's just a cup cozy. Just whip stitch it together and call it good. 
or you could add a faux button and a loop if you wanted to. Um, anything you want. All right, so I'm at the end. I rotate it. Try to get my yarn. I am not a magic loop fan. I prefer double points. We already had this discussion, but I just want you guys to know. Oh, and that's why. Because I pulled the wrong needle out all the time. Goodness gracious. I was just trying to pull the cord. Oh, man. All right, I'm not going to sit here and fix this, but you see how that works. You pull it back. I was just trying to pull the cord and I pulled the needle out, and that's why I don't like magic loop. But it's time for a cup of tea and a sit down. It's, that's, <laughs> it. that's where that is. I'm like, I'm not fixing that, but I want you guys to see the lace. Can I, it's I can't, beautiful, Molly. It I can't really even is. like straighten anymore. I but can you see there how the lace is starting to come out? And so then you would just finish off with some ribbing and you have it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you want to go to my face? <laughs> ah! All right, y'all. I don't think she is hearing me. There you are. Okay. Here's the important thing. <laughs> You know how to do yarn overs. You know how to do the decreases. You now know how to cast onto double points if you want, or if you don't want to do that, you can totally knit this flat just back and forth. If you want to attempt the magic loop, you could do that as well. Totally up to you. I hope it was useful. I hope seeing me make those mistakes, like just pulling out the cord and pulling out the needle. Ah, I hate it when that happens, um, but it happens, you know, and it's just sticks and string at the end of the day. This actually works up really quickly. I mean, look at how much I got done just in this little amount of time. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Any extra questions? I just want to see here. Um, everybody's saying hi. Awesome. You love the, the cozy. Great. I'm curious how many of you are going to try double points. Raise your hands. Oh, a lot of you. Good. Oh, that's perfect, Cheryl. Good job. She is on her way. I love double points. I think they're the way to go, honestly, if that's me. Um, awesome. Tina, I see that. Allie is saying hello and giving me a thumbs up. Good. Um, it, even if you guys, you're like, I want to master these double points. If you just do the ribbing and then do some stockinette stitch and then go back to ribbing, like totally mix the lace. That's a really great cozy too. And then you could attempt the next one with lace. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of different variations here you can do. It's, it's a really good place to start. All right. Good luck, you guys. I know you can do it. And if it helps you feel better, you saw I made mistakes too. Like just happens. Some days are just worse than others, but it's okay. It's totally okay. Awesome. All right. It's all you, Lillian. Thanks, Molly. I think that was such a wonderful class and it was really um, helpful even just to me personally to see how you recovered and what you did to fix things. So <laughs> I learned tons. I'm sure everybody here did. <laughs> and it sounds funny. like there's a lot of people that are willing to give double pointed needles a try after seeing, particularly after seeing your cast on because you made it look so simple. It is so easy. Mm -hmm. It is so easy. No cuss cast on. It's just a long tail cast on. It's just the way I divide them on the needles. It's yeah. like it's seriously my favorite. Loved it. All right. Thanks everyone for joining us today for this live community classroom with Michaels. We would love to see your whips. So please share your work with hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag Yanspirations. And just a reminder that you can find more classes on michaels.com and the recording of today's class. So you can go at your own pace on michaels.com slash classes. Thanks for joining awesome. us, everyone. Bye. Bye, Stephanie, Cheryl, Linda, LJ, Carla. Oh my gosh, so many of you here. It's great. Bye, guys. <laughs>